Won't you hear me? Won't you see? Ritorna a me I'm begging you, come back to me Ritorna a me Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to the Montague Audacity Escalation. My name is Mr. Freeze 2244 and for this one we only have two basic targets. This is going to be taking place in Santa Fortuna. No specific kill requirements for the first two targets, however, but uh, this is the equipment I'm going to use. I'm going to start in the submarine cave, bring along the lethal syringe, the red tie kiwi, because actually it's unironically, un un it's actually a good item in this escalation. And I'm bringing along the basic pistol as well. And the reason why we're using the red tie kiwi is because it it has it is double distraction. So if you throw it the red tie kiwi just over there, it's going to distract both guards away, and that's the only item in the game that can do that. So the reason why we want that to happen is so this guy is isolated, so we can go ahead and take him out. So just watch out for everyone's uh, where everyone's looking at that equipment in time. I'm just going to wait for that submarine guy to look up before we stab him with the syringe. And once he's been taken care of, we're now going to move on to the second target. Now there's going to be a guard patrolling up and down. And it's going to be this guy right here. We're going to go ahead and just shoot him in the back of the neck before the guard comes back up the stairs. So that's where you need to be pretty quickly to do that. However, if you would rather wait for the guard to come back up, he, he does uh, slowly walk back up the stairs and then walks back down. So you can wait for that if you want to, but if you're as fast as I am, you can get away with just shooting him in the back of the head there and then taking him out and hide him in the crate. Obviously shooting out that camera on the way out as well. There's probably a faster exit but I didn't bother to uh, find out which is the fastest route because I'm not really familiar, too familiar with the, the caves and stuff like that and all the different exits. We are going to have to uh, untie this uh, rope. Alternatively, you can go ahead and shoot it. It's a shame you can't get around with the uh, the bank there and cr crown across the, uh, the bridge. It's called a bank, right? I think that's what it's called. But yeah, it's an obnoxiously long wait time for this log. Finally, we can cross. We're actually going to take the boat exit as well. You can take the scooter if you want to, but you need the key. And to get the key, you need to knock out the uh, the guy that's standing right next to it. Which you can still get away with Silent Assassin if you want to. It's just entirely up to you. I just really couldn't be bothered to take the risk. You may as well just do the safe route anyway. However, there is an enforcer in here with this disguise on, but you shouldn't have to worry too much about him. I think it's the very first time I've ever taken this exit actually on this mission. Because I've, I've I don't think I've ever used this before, but then again, I didn't get a challenge pop before me to say that I've exited here because usually there's like a challenge link to it or like a feat or something or a discovery or something like that and along those lines. But yeah, level one, fairly straightforward. Uh, sort of assassin there. So let's go ahead and move on to level two. And for level two, we have to now hack our laptop as well as take out the two targets as well. So this is the equipment I used, same as level, same as level one. Nothing's uh, changed. And this is what we're going to do. So we're going to turn on this radio and then turn it back off. We're going to press our body against this uh, little shelf right here. Don't edge out too much because then you, for some reason the other submarine guy hears this. So you want to subdue this guard from around the corner. Grab his uh, SMG that he drops on the floor as well. And then drag his body and dump him in the crate. We're also going to take his disguise, but this is not completely necessary, but I'm going to take his disguise as well. Next, we're going to distract the other submarine guy by turning the radio on and then back off. Yeah, it's reacting a little bit slow. I wish they'd speed up the reaction times of these uh, distractions in the game. It'd make the game so much more fun. But once we've knocked him out, we're going to put him in the crate too. And now we don't need to work on the laptop. We've left the time at the top of the screen so you can follow along on all the timings of everything. But uh, you should be good to go from this point. Around about the 1 minute 7 mark, you can go ahead and hack the laptop. The problem, the, There's another problem here with this guard behind me. He has a weird neck turning. Or head turning, I should say. He, he looks everywhere. He, he's basically got an owl head. And you can just look around 360. And but, so you just need to watch out for him. If the timings match up, you'll be fine. But if you can't time it very well, then uh, go ahead and watch my level 3 guide in, in about a minute or so. And then you'll see exactly how I got around that. So don't worry if you can't do level 2. Level 3, I'll show you exactly how to do it. I reckon getting around that situation. From this point, we're just going to follow what we did in the previous uh, level. Throwing the red tie kiwi over there. 
That's going to again distract the two guards. And then we're going to stab him with the uh, lethal syringe, making sure everyone is looking another way. One target remaining is this guy up here. The guard is now uh, patrolling up the ground, like I said in the previous level. So because he's in a different position than he was previously, because we're, we're, our timing is a little bit different now, we're going to wait for him to walk down the stairs. So once he gets to the second stair, set of stairs, that's when we can shoot the guard in the head and you'll be able to say the difference, distance between um, the shot and the guard falling down. We don't want him to turn around and here. Dump Tompy's body in the crate and now we can head straight to the exit. Again, just watch out for that camera at the end during in that little cave uh, area and you'll be good to go there's no variation to the ending here it's exactly the same level three is a little bit different but like i said with that guard uh with a head turning kind of thing uh don't worry about it like carry on watching the rest of the video talk to level three and then you also you can see how i got around that situation with the head turning because for some reason um he decided to only want to spot me in level three for some reason i don't get it why because I practiced this, and I practiced that same section again and again. And for some reason, he wasn't spotting me in level 2 at all, but for level 3 he did. But I'm guessing it's just a timing thing. But uh, we'll see. You'll see what I mean when in level 3. So we're just going to cross this river now, and head straight to the boat exit, like, uh, like I said. And we're good to go for level 3. Level 2, fairly straightforward. I don't like escalations that involve laptops, though, because it's, it's always going to be having the problems with the head turning. This happened in Season 1, too, that, that there was, like, a, an escalation in Marrakesh and involved it in the consulate building. That was a horrible escalation when it comes to the head turning on the laptop. It's, oh, that was bad. The echo still illumination, again, it's, similarly, in Season 1, it was very bad as well because the head turning was bad. It's not as bad in Season 2, but... It's still, it's still there, still existed. But that's how they do level two. Level three, we've got additional cameras for this one. It does make things a little bit more complicated, but not too much. So again, same equipment as level two. No, nothing's uh, changed there. But we are going to do things a little bit differently. First, turn on the radio, and then turn it back off. That's going to distract the guard. Like I said, press your body against this shelf. Again, not too far over the ledge because if, if the more you edge out. Uh, the, the submarine guy will hear you subduing from around the corner. It's kind of weird how that works. Grab his SMG and then drag his body and dump him in the crate. Let's go ahead and put his disguise on as well. And now we're just going to... I'm going to shoot this radio because it's... Re for some reason, uh, NPCs react faster to gunshot sounds. But I think all sounds should be reacting the same speed. Look at that. So if I turn the radio off, he'd be looking left, looking right, and going, hey, what's that? I'm not, and doing all that sort of uh, crap. So that's the reason why I just shot it, even though it doesn't really matter. So what we actually waited to do is that guard to walk away, and then we're going to go ahead and go over this area, pull out our pistol. We got spotted by the camera, don't worry, but we're going to take it out right now while shooting that there, making sure that guard doesn't see us by hiding it, using the door as cover. Then we're going to pull out the SMG, and then we're going to drop it in front of this guard when that guard at the back you see him with the shotgun when he starts turning around and walking towards us that's when we're going to drop the smg in front of this guard with a hat this is how we're going to get around the head turning guys look at him looking look at him left and look, looking right it's random as well so there's no pattern to it so we're going to drop that smg in front of him now and then just jump down here so we can, so it breaks the uh, line of sight the reason why we timed it that way is because this guard patrolling up and down we don't want to to spot us uh, hacking that laptop because it does take 20 seconds so as long as you've got that timing right which is very easy to time you can start hacking the laptop so you'll have plenty of time as well and uh, you'll have a load of extra time as well so loads of time to get this there's no reason to get spotted here either because there's no one else has any eyeballs in the section so you should be good to go You might be wondering, uh, is it necessary to take out the cameras? And it is, yes. Because otherwise, the red tie kiwi doesn't work. And I'll explain that a little bit later on as we're exiting. But for now, uh, we're going to do what we did in the previous two levels. Exactly the same strategy. There's nothing, no variation here. But uh, this will only work if you didn't uh, shoot the cameras. 
if you shot the camera, this isn't going to work. So, through the red tie kiwi there, that's going to distract both guards. So one guard hears the sound of it dropping, and neither one guard hears the squeak. So that's why two of them are reacting. I'm going to take out the target with a syringe, climb up the pipe, and then uh, take out the other guard. Again, just watching out for any guards that are patrolling up and down. Here's one. And because we haven't heard this little conversation here, because we haven't triggered it early, he's going to talk to him for about, you know, not, not very long. He's going to talk to him for a second. And once he's finished, he's going to turn around and walk back down the stairs. He might be in a different position to you, depending on your timing. Again, we're waiting for him to walk down the second step stairs. There we go. Shoot him in the face and put him in the crate. And then we can exit the mission. So what I was saying before in regards to the cameras, if you shoot the cameras rather than taking, uh, and taking, uh, taking the evidence out like I did, then the guard will go and distract the noise of the camera, the one that's standing next to the target. And because he's already reacted to one distraction, he doesn't react to a second, if that makes sense. That is, it's kind of weird how it works. I think it's a bug or something like that. But I found every time I shot the cameras rather than taking out the evidence manually like I did, then it it didn't create that second distraction with the red tie kiwi. He would, the submarine guy would go over with the guard instead of both guards going, which is very strange. I'm not completely sure why that happens. It's probably just something to do with the coding or the programming of it, but... Um, that's you have to take out the evidence slide just by shooting it or manually taking it out by hacking it But if you shoot the cameras over there and you want the red tie kiwi thing to work It's not going to so just keep that in mind uh, when you are attempting this This is the reason why I didn't show that because I wanted to do just a consistent strategy It's actually very hard to do walkthroughs on hitman because there's a lot of inconsistencies when it comes to this game and uh, Yeah, I don't think people appreciate how much uh, effort it is to go through these uh, different things that are relatively easy and straightforward. However, it's to come up with a consistent plan and something that works all the time is the difficult part. And I don't think people really think about that when it comes to just watching videos. I think people take it for granted. But uh, that's just the way it is. But that's how you get the Silent Assassin for the third level. So overall, fairly decent contract. Well, that's why I said contract. You could make this in a contract apart from the laptop. But uh, yeah, it was okay. Not not the best, but it's not the worst either. It was alright. But that's going to do it for this video. So thank you very much for watching. Feel free to drop a like on this video if it helped you out. And subscribe if you are brand new to the channel. And hit the bell notification to be notified of all future videos and live streams. And consider supporting me on Patreon. Or even becoming a member of the channel by clicking the join button below. And thank you to Argel, Finn Parkinson and The Shave for becoming top tier Psycho Assassin members of the channel. I really do appreciate it. There's a link in the description of all the different tiers and the membership. You can check that out if you want to. And that's going to do it for this video. I might do the Art of Revenge Challenge pack next, um, considering it's only one like contract video I've had to do. But yeah, I'm not going to do the Master Fortune Teller, though, because it's not, ugh, not very good. Anyway, I'll see you guys later in the next video. Cheers.